Okay. Here. This right here. This is an overview of what's contained in what's commonly called the law. The law of God. The law of God. And this is a response to a question that we receive from Crown Christ concerning ordinances, codes, and statutes. Now, the very first matter that we sought to address is that codes is not found within the King James Version of the Bible or the, the authorized or the revised version of the Bible. Codes is a more modern legalistic um, phraseology. But here we have um, an outline of the threefold giving of the law. Now, this is based on the scriptures, and as we mentioned, um, if you don't have the Schofield Study Bible, you can download this from www.lojsociety.org and utilize it on your Kindle or, you know, your iPod or whatever your mobile device that you are able to read um, books and utilize it like that, although a hard copy of the, the Bible, the King James, the basic study Bible that we utilize, the, the Schofield, the first Schofield in particular, is, um, is, is, is the best version that we, that we find, especially for discipleship. There's newer versions of it, but that's a whole different discussion with some of the newer versions. There are certain things as um, charts and diagrams and summaries that are more modernized but the, the first Schofield Study Bible is a good reference material. It has a footnote here which speaks on the Mosaic Covenant that was um, given to Israel, the Beit Israel, in three divisions. And each is essential to the others, and together they form what's known as the Mosaic, the Mosaic Code, the Mosaic, the Mosaic Covenant, the Eucalyptus, excuse me, the Mosaic Covenant which some might regard it as a code. When we say our code, our code, let's address this. The code would be the scriptures. According to the Imperial Majesty, um, for my part, I glory in the Bible. For my part, I glory in the Bible. So the, the Bible, like for the Bushido, for us as true Christian, and especially as Rastafari, the Bible, the B-I-B-L-E, the Metaf Kedus, this is our code. Our code it outlines our code for, for character and our code for conduct. But now here we recognize there's the Mosaic Covenant, the Mosaic Covenant, which is contained in chapter 20 of Exodus. There's a subscription here that speaks on redemption, the third matter of redemption, the experience, or self, or inclusive of the self being known through the revelation of Ha Elohim Hashem's holy law. Then there's a reference in New Testament, Romans chapter 7, verses 7 to 24. Now, it goes on to say that the law, the law, this is what's contained in this, in this particular chapter, Exodus, and this will go far in helping us to understand exactly what is, what are the differences between the the ordinances, or also the statutes, the statutes, as well as what's known as the judgments. But it's interesting, um, they are not different so much, but as this uh, Schofield Study Bible points out, that the Mosaic Covenant that was given to Israel was in three divisions and each is essential to the others. Each of the three parts, the three aspects of this Mosaic Covenant that is given to the Beit Israel and together, together they form what's known as the Mosaic Covenant vis-a-vis, -vis, and here's where we go through it, the threefold giving of the law. There is a threefold giving of the law. The law, according to the Ethiopic, is the hug, hug, the hug, 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 also known as the hak, hak, a hak. Now, we put up a, a, a video recently that went into some of the etymology of what is known as um, the 39th distinctive, the word of the 39th uh, Torah 
um, portion, the distinctive word being hukat, hukat and hukat, hukat. Some Jews say hukat, 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 but more correctly is hukat, hukat. And now the root comes down as we went through that in the particular video. I think it's at the um, Ethiopian World Net. You can look for that. Speaking of the etymology of the hukat, the hukat. The root is hug. Hug is the Ethiopic word for law. Now the threefold. Pay careful attention. Take this down as no. The threefold speaks to the Judaic Trinity or the Hebrew Trinity, the Trinity of the God of Abraham, Yisachar, and Yaakov. Now here in Exodus chapter 20, we find a threefold giving of the law, a threefold giving of the hug the hug or the hak, that which is true, the threefold giving of the law. So the law has three parts, three parts, or we can say three aspects. There are three aspects to the law. Now, the Schofield, the first Schofield Study Bible, the footnote, this is what we, we advise and seek to encourage the brothers and sisters to study, to, to really take the teachings of His Majesty serious in the sense of study, you understand, to really study it, to, to, to document, to, to, to write it down, to journal, to, to, to learn it. This is the only way that we can really learn it so we can put it into effect. If we look at the world and see so much unrighteousness in the world, well, we know what the law of God contains. The law of God is righteous. But how come... Um, there's so much wickedness because there are there's a lack of 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 those who keep the the the, the commandments. The commandments is the first part, right? And the commandments are very very important. But something needs to be distinguished in the question that um, Crown Christ asked concerning um, the differences between the ordinances and 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 codes and statutes. Being, are they not different than the commandments, specifically the Ten Commandments? Here's a word that we need to say on the Ten Commandments. Since the, ten, since the commandments is the first part, we need to understand the Ten Commandments. Let's go over this for a moment. We have a threefold giving, right? We have a threefold giving, a threefold giving of the law, which we refer to this threefoldness as it relates to the Judaic or the Hebraic, or the Jewish Trinity, the, the Trinity of the God of Abraham, Yisachar, and Yaakov. Once again, to verify and affirm that this is not a New Testament matter, the so-called Trinity. The word may be um, newly coined in the English language, but it's not a new idea scripturally, biblically, as even the law, the threefold giving of the law, is reflective of this. The first part is the commandments. The commandments. This is the Amharic, the Tizazit, the Ethiopian, the Ethiopic, and Amharic Tizaz. It's known as the Tizazit, Tizaz, the Tizaz. This is singular. This is in the singular sense. In other words, as in commandment or order. The commandment or order. Tizazit. Then we have this over here. We have t-i-za-za-t, the t i za za the t i za za This is in the plural sense of the commandments, the commandments. What's interesting, if you were to speak to a religious or orthodox Jew, a Christian speaking to a Jew, the Christian might speak about the Ten Commandments, and the Jew would respond that there are more than just Ten Commandments in Scripture. There are 316. 3 and 16, even though not just commandments, but they, it's inclusive of the ordinances or the statutes and the judgments. But the important point of the Ten Commandments, and here when we were teaching this formally, we made this note up here, saying the Ten Commands actually equal the Ten Words. In other words, Ten Commandments, you cannot find within the King James, the Authorized, or even the Revised Version, in the text where it states the Ten Commands. Rather, it states it, it calls it the Decalogue. 
the Decalogue. What's important about the Decalogue is that Deca means ten, and Log or Logos, you understand, know means words. So the ten words. So the ten commandments more properly should be referred to as a ten word. Why? Why is this important? This is important because in truth, technically speaking, there are no such thing as ten commandments as many Christians and even some Jews have been led to believe. Many people have been led to believe that what they find in Exodus chapter 20 is the ten commands rather than what it really calls itself the ten words. So it's the ten words. The ten words are all one commandment. This is why we thought it necessary to put both the singular, the singularity, and the plurality of this idea, the first part of this threefold giving of the law, the threefold giving of the hook. Now, we're going to touch on this much more, but let's move on so we can get an overview of what is in the law. Remember, all this is part and parcel of the law. The Schofield Study Bible has a very good um, explanation in the footnotes and, and references, and we advise anyone that seeks to understand exactly the relationship of these, these three aspects of the one hook, the one law, the one law, the tripartite, the threefold, the triune giving of the law of Hashem, the law of Ha Elohim, the law of Yahweh Elohim, the El Elohe Israel. Secondly, the second part of this matter is the ordinances, what's often called the ordinances. Now, here's a curious thing. Ordinances and statutes. Now, the question that was asked was, are not the ordinances, codes, and statutes not different, are not different than the commandments? Technically speaking, they are different than the commandments. There's the commandments, you understand, the commandments, which really is the pure, the pure righteous will of the true God is expressed in what's known as the commandment. In Exodus chapter 20 is the commandment, not the Ten Commands, but the Ten Words form one commandment. This is why in the New Testament, the book of James, in um, the book of James, where James says that if you break one part, you understand, like one word, you understand, you basically break the whole command. In other words, one, if you violate one word, because it's like ten articles, you understand, of one order, ten articles, ten articles. You can't keep one article and don't keep the next in spirit and in truth because it is one command. And the Almighty refers to this as tizaze, my order, my charge, my command, or my commandment. Now, there are other commandments. You understand? There are other commandments, and we're going to find out how these came into being because the people were unworthy to keep this, to keep the ten words, to keep his command. You understand? Therefore, we have the ordinances. The second matter is the ordinances. Now, ordinances and statutes. 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 We must try to articulate that, not to confuse that with statutes, but the statutes. The statutes, Bamarinya and Namhark, is called the Sirat. The Sirat. We touched on the Sirat and the Seder briefly as a, as a, as a basic... Um, orientation to this idea that there is the order, literally this would be more correctly the order in the sense of ordinance, a statute in the sense of a religious, you understand, statute. So the ordinances now govern the religious, the religious life or the spiritual life and practices of the beta Israel chiefly. But now the King James Version of the Bible, something very interesting. You will find that sometimes, instead of finding the word ordinances translated, you will find the word statute. Statute, he'll say my statute or my statutes. You understand? So sometimes 
for the word sarat, you might find in the translation, name of the King James translation, either ordinance or ordinances, or sarat or statutes. Statutes. Now, the third part, we're going to get back to this, but the third part is the judgments or the judgment, the third, the third, the third, which we know as the judgment or the shofat, you know, the mishpot, you understand, within the Hebraic sense, but in the Ethiopic and in the royal and Hark sense, this is the third. So these three aspects in the Bamarinya, according to the Met of Kedus of Hala Selassie, is the Tizaz, as, as well as the later or after the Tizaz came the Tizazat, or the commandments, but the ten words, or Exodus 20, is referring to the commandment in the singular sense. It's very important to understand this differences, this difference. So there is a difference between Exodus chapter 20, it's all one command, but it's ten words. Later on, other commandments, you understand, other commandments, and this will touch on some of the, um, what our thoughts are on those scriptures, Ephesians 2 and 15, Colossians 2, 16 to 17, and Galatians 3, 24 to 25. Now, the, a, a matter that we need to um, address here when we speak about differences. First of all, we address the commandment and the commandments. The ten words falsely called, the ten commandments are really one commandment that has ten words or ten articles, we can say to it. Secondly is the ordinances and statutes. In studying this from the from the scriptural perspective of the King James Bible and comparing this with the Ethiopic as well as the Royal Amharic or the Metaph Kedus, we came to the understanding that in the King James Version there is some um, inconsistency in the translation of the, the Hebraic term, which in Ethiopic is Sir'at. Sometimes you will find the Sir'at translated as statutes. Sometimes you will find Sir'at translated as ordinances. And, and this, is, this might be a little bit confusing, but we'll go into this in a little bit detail. Now you have the judgments. Occasionally, in translation, what is the judgment or the judgments would actually be translated as ordinances. So sometimes you'll find a verse in the King James Bible where it would, you know, a verse within the King James Bible where it would say, um, ordinance, my ordinance and my statutes, or my ordinances and my statutes, or my statutes and my ordinances. And sometimes that is speaking of my sarat and my third, or my order, ordinance, and my judgments. So for the ordinances are sometimes called statutes, and judgments, the judgment is sometimes called ordinance. A judgment might be called an ordinance. So now, how do we clarify this matter? In other words, how do we gain a working knowledge of this particular matter? We gain a working knowledge of the particular matter by studying, by studying to show ourselves approved. And it's very, very important for us to study and to show ourselves approved. So let's go to this a little bit briefly here. As we were touching on Exodus chapter 20, the footnote down here, it says, to, just to review, it says that the Mosaic covenant and the Mosaic covenant is the, 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 the fifth, the fifth out of the eight covenants that we find in the scripture from Old Testament to New, that we find in the Old, from Old Testament to New, the Mosaic covenant is the fifth, is the fifth. And it says, um, the Mosaic covenant given to the Beta Israel in three divisions, in three divisions, threefold, Judaic Trinity, the triune, in three divisions, 
each essential to the others and forming and together, together forming the Mosaic covenant vis-a-vis the commandments which expresses the righteous will of God, Exodus 20 verses 1 to 26, the judgments which govern the social life of Israel, the social life of Israel, Exodus 21 to Exodus 24 and 11, and the ordinances. Now, the ordinances, they govern the religious or the spiritual life of Israel, and they are chiefly found in Exodus uh, 24 and 12 to Exodus 31 and 18. Now, it's these three elements that form what's known as the law or the hook. These three elements form what we call the hook, is the hook. So when you're reading in the Bible and saying the law of God, you have to recognize that the law of God has three, it's, it's tripartite. It has three aspects, three parts. And this, is, this also shows the nature of the true God. You know what I'm saying? From, from the very beginning and throughout Scripture. And also the true Judaic Trinity or the God of Abraham, Yisrahak, and Yaakov. Now, moving forward and further, these three elements, they form the law. As that phrase is generically used in the Hadith Kidan, the Burt Hadasha, or the New Testament, Matthew um, 5, verses 17 to 18. The commandments and the ordinances, they form one religious system. Let's understand this, that the commandments, the commandments and the ordinances, they form one religious system. There's one religious system that's formed through the commandment and the, the ordinances, right? The commandments were a, quote, ministry of condemnation, end quote, and of, quote, death, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 7 to 9. The ordinances gave, now through the serat, you understand? Through the serat. Now, you, this is a point that needs to be understood and distinguished. What commandments are, are, are they speaking about? Remember what we already demonstrated is that they are the commandments. Let's get over here. The commandment, which is the Ten Commands, or the or called the Ten Commands, which is actually one word, or the Decalogue, which is a, a singularity. Then afterward, there were other additional commandments. So which commandment is it talking about? See, this is why when people are reading Paul, Hwariya Paulos, people are reading the New Testament often, and they're reading what Paul is speaking about, the law. In fact, even in the New Testament, there are many laws or commandments, and, and there's a whole legal system which many non-Hebrews, to say non-Jews, in other words, don't understand. And this is part of where um, counterfeit, counterfeit Christianity Counterfeit Christianity is today, or Gentile Christianity, because originally Christianity was, was you could say, based on a Judaic foundation. Even um, Hamushi, or Jesus Christos himself, would say that ye worship that which you know not. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews, or salvation is of Judah. Salvation is of Moa Anbesa Ze'em Negeda Yehuda. Salvation is of the line of the tribe of Judah. Salvation is of the Judah or the Jews, to imply the Jews. This is, this is very significant. This is very significant. And we need to make a note of that. So <clears throat> here where it says that the commandments were a ministry of condemnation and of death, I would like you to make a note and distinguish that it's speaking of the and here's where one of the one of the um, the verses that we were asked our thoughts on actually uh, um, 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 touches touches on that. In fact, it is uh, 
ወደ ፌሰን ሰዎች ምዕራፉ ለት ቁጥራውቻ 14 እስከ 15 درس um verses 14 to 15 where it says arsu salama chinna wala hu latun ya wahada ba awaja yata nagrut nema ya tizazatin hig shiro ba makakal yallowna yetla gida gidan ba sigawa ya farasa yihim ko hu latacho andina disina so በራሱዋ ይፈጥር ዘን ሰላምን ማያደርግ ዘን the turgun the translation is for he is our peace who have made both one and have broken down the middle wall of partition between us having abolished in his flesh the enmity or to say the hatred even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for to make in himself of twain one new man so making peace now some may read that and you get the false impression that this means that the law of god is no more and it is really um sad on one level shocking and 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 spiritually devastating that many Christians believe that because of the grace of God through and in Yeshua HaMashiach or in Gitach and Yesus Christos that the the law has been done away with and in particular that the 10 commandments are implied here in Ephesians 2 verses 14 to 15 when it speaks of the law of commandments contained in ordinances this is very key this is what we say pay attention study and show yourself approved by marinya it says but awaj yetanegrutnema yet izazatin hug shero is saying that he has abolished you understand abolish the law of commandments of, of the, the the law of commandments that was proclaimed that was that 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 is that was spoken as a proclamation as in essence a ordinance as a proclamation this is different than the tizaz or the 10 words known as the decalogue it is very important to distinguish one from the other and let's um bring this reference here since we're actually touching on this because this is where there's been a big controversy concerning the law of god whether the law of god was changed and this also um is connected at at another point with keeping the sabbath whether it is saturday or we don't keep the saturday anymore but we come together on sunday and this is part of the false idea that um the romanism and the roman catholic church and um satan's uh, accomplices have deceived many people into um believing and even worse yet in making others believe it that there was the ceremonial law you understand there was the ceremonial law and there was the pure law or the command the decalog the 10 words this is this is a distinction that needs to be understood or what some call the ceremonial law and the two covenants the distinction between the moral law the moral righteous pure law of ha elohim of ha shem which is called the 10 commandments but more correctly the command or the 10 words and the ceremonial law is is abundantly clear and it's very plain when you look carefully at the difference in the two the one has animal sacrifices the one that contains the animal sacrifices this was nailed to the cross and the other will stand forever so 
Ephesians chapter 2, verses 14 to 15, is not speaking of this, the ten, the ten words or the tizaz, but it's rather speaking of the tizazat, or more correctly, the awaj yete negarutinim yete izazatina hik. You understand the law of commandments in the plural sense, not the pure, the one law, the the the, the, the or the one command. The one command has ten words. Now, some claim that the Ten Commands, what they call the Ten, falsely call the Ten Commands, or the Ten Words that we know as the Law, was, or the, or the Command, was taken from the 42 negative confessions of Ma'ad. Truth is truth. Was Moses, Musa, our Coptic Hebraic brother, familiar with the 42 negative uh, confessions of Ma'ad? Well, of course he was. He was learned in the wisdom of the Egypts and was a man mighty in word and deed. He was an uh, a initiate and, 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 and an adept, and some can say a, a master of that ancient um, Kamite um, mistos or, or, or muthos. He, he was a master of that, you understand? But one has to understand that the pure righteous will of the true God changes not. One might write it in ten words and summarize it in ten words. Another might summarize it in 42, and they call them negative confessions. The, the main thing and the main principle is the moral law or the moral and the righteous will being expressed. You understand? Being codified, in other words, and being expressed. Now, we don't really see any any um, conflict with the fact that the Beta Israel learned and preserved much ancient truth and, and, and wisdom in the Hebraic sense out of Egypt. After all, the true God says, I have called my son out of Egypt. Egypt. So there it is. Now we continue to move forward. This does not mean that everything Egyptian is condemnable, as many Eurocentric and confused folks, even many of them black folks, and many of them are our so called Hebrew Israelite people, are very confused because they need to be born again, born again from above, and really to recognize what the righteous will of the Almighty is and to see it his way or Yah's way and not our own way. And there's more that we can say on this particular matter of ancient Egypt and, and, and the Beta Israel, but for one to say that we, I and I, and the Beta Israel needs to be more grateful to Egypt than to the true God, the God of the Hebrews, who called Egypt out, we would not agree with that because one time even the ancient Kamites knew and worshipped Yahweh and knew and worshipped the true God. This is a half of the story that hasn't been told. So when you really understand what was going on in ancient Egypt, then you will understand and understand the need and necessity to preserve the truth that many of the Egyptians at one time, a more ancient time, new in practice. But there were other ideas and, and idols and, and ideologies that were coming in. This is why when we look at the Beta Israel and the movement of the Israelites, we should not just look at it as a so-called, um, as a racial movement, seeing both of them were black peoples, but we have to understand it as a religious movement or a spiritual movement or a perspective. You understand? Because they say the perspective, one's perspective is salvation. Is the cup half empty or half full? Something we can meditate on, food for thought. But when we look at this particular verse right here in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 14 to 15, when it speaks, of the law that was contained in 
in ordinances, or more correctly, even the law of commandments, tizazat, contained in ordinances, we must distinguish that from what James, or Yaakov, says in, in James 2 and 8, where the pure law, the tizaz, the command, the decalogue, the ten words, the asarat, the asertek ala, the ten words, is called the nugusawi hik. Let's turn there for a moment. Turn to James, James chapter two, James chapter two, verse eight. James chapter two, verse eight. In James chapter 2, it says, Negergin met half balingera hina in the rasa hit a wood dead in the meal, ye nugusin hug bitter fetch a mu melkam tadar galacho. If ye, you all, fulfill the royal law, which Bamarinya is called ye nugusin hug or ye nugus hug. The, the law of the king. The royal law is the kingly law. If ye fulfill the Nagus law, if you fulfill um, the king of kings law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Ye do well. Ye do well. So there's a distinction between the ceremonial law, you understand, or the law that was contained in, in, in commandments, or the law of commandments that was contained in ordinances, there's a difference between that and the pure law that has been called the Ten Commands, or more correctly, the Ten Words, the One Command, the pure, the pure law. So we thought it was important to just touch on that um, briefly right there. So that's, that's part of what we feel on these, uh, these, these verses. The, the, first one, the first one being dealt with um, first, you had verse 15, but we had to actually uh, take that in its, uh, these two verses, Bamarinya, is, is one verse, is one verse. So so that the, the law of commandments contained in ordinances referred to animal sacrifices and is known as the ceremonial law. This has nothing to do with the pure law that was from the beginning. In fact, let's just go on. We'll find out why it was necessary for these animal sacrifices. This is why when it says right here, this is why when it says right here that the commandments and the ordinances form one religious system. The, the commandments were a ministry of condemnation, speaking about what Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 14 to 15 is connecting and not speaking of the ten words or the commandment known as the ten commandments. So the other commandments, you understand, that pertain to um, animal sacrifice and ceremonial law were a ministry of condemnation and of death. The ordinances gave in the high priest a representative of the people with Yahweh or Yahweh, and in the sacrifices gave them a cover or atonement. Atonement. Atonement is another key um, subject matter that ones need to, especially in their discipleship, needs to study these, 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 these words, these, these ideas, these concepts, and to see how they relate one to another in order to get the, the full picture or the full, to say, the full view. Now, for their sins in, in, in anticipation of the cross. So, before there was the cross and before there was Christ, these Old Testament, these old types of sacrifices were a cover or an atone, atonement. Now, the Christian, and moreover, I and I as Ras Teferi, we are not under the conditional 
Mosaic Covenant of Works, which is known loosely as the law. Remember what it says right here in Ephesians um, 2, verses 14 to 15? the law of commandments contained in ordinances, and this was the ceremonial law vis-a-vis -vis the sacrifices, because it says that the Rastafari, I know it's Rastafari, which is the true Christian, is not under the conditional Mosaic law of works, the law, but under the unconditional, by contrast, there are conditions, new covenant of grace. The, the, the condition is to ma men or is to uh, believe, in that sense, to, to admit. Now, furthermore, in the threefold giving of the law, first it was given orally in Exodus 20, verses 1 to 17. This, as we've been mentioning, was pure, was pure law. And this is in reference right here to the command, falsely called the Ten Commands, but rightly known as the Ten Words or the Decalogue. You understand? This is the pure law. This came before this, the Tzizazai, or the additional commandments, as in the law of commandments containing ordinances for animal sacrifices, because it says, furthermore, the pure law had no provision of priesthood and sacrifice for failure. In other words, the royal law, or the kingly law, it had no provision for a, a human priesthood or of any sacrifices, like animal sacrifices, for failure to live up to it, and it was accompanied by the judgments. In other words, there was a pure law and there was a judgment. So when we understand the role of the priesthood, and the role of the animal sacrifices, it's very important to understand the role of the priesthood and the role of the animal um, sacrifices. That that was not from the beginning because when the, in the threefold giving of the law, which first was orally, you understand, in Exodus 20, verses 1 to 17, this was pure law. No provision of priesthood, and no provision for sacrifice or failure, but it was accompanied by the the judgments or the third, you understand, or the fifth, according to Exodus 21 to Exodus 23 and 13, relating to the relations, these judgments now are relating to the relations of Hebrew with Hebrew, or what we would call today the relationship of black on black. You know, saying the relationship of black is why there's so much black on black crime because ones don't understand the importance of the of the hug. You understand? And they do not keep the ten words or his command. You understand? And know nothing of his ordinances, his statutes. But nonetheless, the judgments are the judgments, and there is and will be judgment. Now, to to which this was added directions. Now, when we look at how the, the, the threefold giving of the law originally was revealed, we had the pure law or the pure command with its ten words, the Decalogue, and it was accompanied by judgments relating to the relationship of Hebrew with Hebrew or black Jew with black Jew, or Rastafari with Rastafari, Ethiopian Hebrew, Ethiopian Hebrew, to which were added in Exodus 23, verses 14 to 19, there were directions or instructions, we can say, for the keeping of three annual feasts. And at Exodus 23, um, verses 20 to 33, instructions were given for the conquest of the Canaan. Instructions were given for the conquest of the promised land, the conquest of the promised land. And it's very important that we, especially as Rastafari, pay attention to this, study this, and, and, and recognize that Ori or Torah is our wisdom. You understand? And the New Testament verses, when rightly understood, they verify and confirm this perspective and this 
point of view. Now, the words Moses communicated to the people, these are the words that Moses communicated to the people in Exodus 24, verses 3 to 8. Now, immediately, in the persons of the elders, they were admitted into the Wendamamachnet of Egeziabihir, or the fellowship of Ha Elohim, in Exodus 24, verses 9 to 11. Now, secondly, Moses was then called up to receive to Mechabel, to Kabbalah, the silat, or the tablets, or the tables of stone, in Exodus 24, verses 12 to 18. Now, it's at this point that the story begins to divide. It's almost like a split screen. If we're watching it as a movie, there'll be like a split screen. We have, on one hand, Moses in the mount. He receives, he kabbalas, he kebelem, kebels, the gracious instructions concerning the tabernacle, priesthood, and sacrifice in Exodus 25 to Exodus 31. Now, meantime, or meanwhile, in Exodus 30. To the people being led by Haron, being led by his um his, his own his own brother Aaron, they break the first commandment, or more correctly, they break the first word of his command. Moses, Musa returning, he breaks the tables, the tablets that were written with the finger of God in Exodus. Um, uh, 31 and 18, uh, 32 verses 16 to 19. Now, thirdly, the second tables or the tablets, the silat, were made, and the law again was written by Musa, by Moses, in the presence, in the very presence of, of, of Yahweh. And we're going to pick up on some more of this, but this is a basic um, foundation and understanding of the threefold giving, the threefold giving of the law. My brothers and sisters, we pray that Yahweh and the Moshiach, Jesus Christos, would enlighten your understanding and your, 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 your practice of His truth and walking His way, truth and living His life the glory of our God Father in the authority of Jesus Christ, of the Moshiach, Adonenu Yehoshua. My brothers and sisters, Shabbat Shalom, Sendet Salam. We'll have hopefully some more to come concerning the Sabbath, and we wish you all, we pray that you have a beautifully good Sabbath, and continue to study and show yourself approved. Amen.